Is, is this working? Can, can you hear me? This always works. Now when I need it the most, it's not working. Oh, 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 you can hear me. Uh, can, can, can you see me? Oh, let, let me just put some lights on. Right, is that better? Now that didn't look very good. And I think it's really important that when you have a virtual call or an interview that you look good. You have good lighting and good sound and you make a good first impression. With some simple tips, I'm going to show you how you can improve your interview and your calls. So therefore that first impression is, wow, this looks good. And you don't have to buy any more kit. You can use what you've got. First of all, let's start off with sound. All you need is headphones with a microphone. The ones you get free with your phone. You have a little microphone piece on it and that's really good. The microphone is close to you, but there are some downsides. Make sure that you don't rub it. Make sure you don't try and eat it and put it basically in your mouth because it will clip the audio and sound awful. A lot of people play with the cable and it ends up rubbing against their clothes and creating this awful sound that they can't hear, but the other person on the call does. Another benefit of using headphones is it avoids feedback. Using the built-in microphone is not good enough you're going to sound really distant and the other person is not going to be able to hear you clearly. They're going to have to strain to try and hear you. But also if you're a bit nervous and you talk a bit fast and eat your words, then having your voice quite low is going to make it even harder for them to understand. So you really need to make it easy for the other person to understand you as clearly as possible and you might have some nerves, that's normal. That's why you need to have the appropriate equipment that you already have in the house. And we started off with audio because audio is actually the most important. If you can't see anyone very clearly, but you can hear them, then that's the most important. But you want your interviewer to see you clearly. So you can show them that you're presentable and we're going to get to that shortly. So let's talk about video and lighting. It's really important to have good lighting in front of you. You don't want a bright window behind you because then you'll look like this and you'll look like a silhouette. It might be really nice for the other person to see that you've got a big bright window and there's some nice meadow outside. But they don't want to see that. They want to see you. So definitely have the window in front of you and make sure it's not too bright. Otherwise, you'll get washed out like this and you'll be squinting the whole time, not be able to see the other person and they'll just see a washed out person. So it's important to have good lighting, but not too bright. So if you do have some shutters, just tilt them up slightly so the light isn't directly on you. You can use a desk lamp and make sure that desk lamp is in front of you and not behind you. Now we're going to talk about camera. Make sure you have your camera in a fixed position and almost eye level if possible. If not, don't worry, but make sure you frame it correctly. Don't cut off half your head like this and don't have it looking up your nose. Make sure your background is clean and tidy. If you can have a wall, then I think that's really good and really consistent. No distractions. If you have the room behind you, then try and tidy it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not showing off your house. You want to show that you're organizing, give a good impression on your interview. Don't use those fake backgrounds unless you've got a proper green screen like I have. The virtual ones that you can do in Zoom and Teams and so on, it's not really good. As you move, the edges just get broken. and You lose an arm as you move your arm or something like that. And that's just, it looks terrible and really, really unprofessional. One thing that you can do to check all these things is do a recording first and then you play it back for yourself. Do you sound clear? Do you look good? Ask friends and family for an opinion. Do they think you can make any improvements? They spot something that you don't. Next, let's talk about internet. Doing the recording locally will allow you to check that everything that we've mentioned so far is good and you can see where you need to improve. However, you need to check your internet works. Try and get close to the Wi-Fi. Even better, plug in via cable if you can. Ask your roommates, your flatmates, people sharing your internet, maybe not to download or play YouTube videos while you're on that call. You really want less lag on the call. It's hard enough trying to speak to someone for the first time when you don't really know them and then you've got lag and there's a delay between each sentence and you start talking over each other. It'll make you more nervous. Let's try and take away these things 
and so you feel more comfortable and relaxed and you can just have a conversation. Interviews can be scary and, and they shouldn't be. They're a conversation and they're a two-way street and we'll come back to that towards the end. Having good internet speed without anyone else using it will just make there'll be less lag, less delays, less robotic voices and it will help the conversation flow like you're doing it in person. Do you have some notes, but if you have them on paper, have them next to you. Don't try and look for them or go through pages and pages of them during the call. Again, it looks unprofessional, it looks like you're disorganized. If you've got them on the screen in front of you, that's great. Try and have it near your camera. Don't have it full screen, so you're kind of looking all over the place. It looks like you're not paying attention. Maybe make it smaller and closer and nearer to the camera, and then you subtly scroll as you go through your notes. So have your notes ready on the screen. Don't try and click around and find the file that you had and all the rest. It will again look unprofessional and disorganized. Turn off any computer notifications. They might not be able to see it, but at least you're not getting distracted and kind of looking over there and seeing, oh, what's, uh, what's Nick saying to me? You will get distracted and you will lose the flow and you'll just make yourself look bad and you'll make yourself more nervous. Put your phone on silent so you don't get distracted. Even if you don't look at it, the other person hearing it in the background, again, it looks a bit rude and unprofessional. If you're going into a meeting with them, into a meeting room, would your phone be on ring? No, it would be on silent. Timings. You've done the test locally. You've tested your call with somebody else in a different location to check your internet. Now, when you're setting up before the actual call on the same day, maybe 10, 15 minutes before, get set up before and just check everything works. Don't have the same problems I had at the beginning where you're playing with the sound, you're check playing with the windows, you're playing with the lights, you're playing with the camera. Have it all ready 10, 15 minutes before and then impress them by joining the call two minutes, no more, no less, before the call. Therefore, if you have any issues where you might need to upgrade your browser, you might use a different browser, you might need to create an account. Therefore, all those issues, you've got a couple of minutes to get those sorted. Do not keep the interviewer waiting. That is the worst thing. When I interview people, if I'm kept waiting for five, 10 minutes, they've already lost so many points and it could be an honest mistake, but time is precious and I just think they're not interested in the role. So have a really good impression, show them that you are interested and you are keen. Another thing you can do is make sure your environment is good. Have a clean background as you mentioned before, but make sure it's quiet. Try and find somewhere quiet. Tell your housemates, your flatmates, your roommates, that you need to quiet for half an hour. Make sure it is quiet and there's no distractions. Someone's not walking behind you. If you don't have that wall behind you, make sure they're not walking behind you or coming up to ask you a question. They need to know that the call is important, so they should not interrupt you. And do not have the call on your bed with your laptop on your lap or on your chest, because every time you breathe and move, it's gonna shake, it's gonna make the other person feel seasick, and again, it will look unprofessional. Make sure you have the camera fixed, and so that it's not moving during the interview. And if you have it on a desk or a table, make sure you aren't kicking it and tapping it because you're nervous. Use a kitchen counter, use a standing desk, that is quite useful if you can, or, or a worktop that is higher up so you can stand, you're less likely to slouch and you're more likely to be more focused, but make sure the camera isn't looking up your nose. Do have water next to you. You will get thirsty, you will be talking a lot and your mouth will get dry and you'll get nervous. So it is really important to have water with you. Maybe have some tissues if you need to blow your nose or you sneeze, you've got hay fever, allergies, anything like that. Make sure you have that to hand. You don't have to say, I need to be back in a minute. So have a comfort break, go to the toilet before the call. It sounds obvious, but so many people don't do this. And if you've got a 13 minute interview to impress and you've done all these great things, you've arrived early, you've got great video, great audio, and you take a few minutes to five minutes to go to the bathroom, wash your hands and so forth. If you need to, then you need to, but try and avoid this. Maximize that 30 minutes so you can impress them and so they don't forget you when they speak to other candidates. Practice, practice, practice with a friend. Ask someone in the community, can you do a practice interview with them? Can you test out your setup? Is it okay? Can they make any suggestions? Dress code. So usually this is more for in the office, but it's still important to make a good impression. You don't have to wear a suit and a tie, but don't wear anything too loud that's too colorful and too noisy. Don't wear your Hawaiian t-shirt. You're not going on holiday. Wear something gray or plain. 
and therefore the focus is on you and not on your colourful and noisy shirt. Or has a big slogan along the front and they're trying to figure out what it says because the camera might have reversed it and trying to figure out what it is. And again, it's a distraction. You want them to focus on you and you to focus on them. Final tips, refresh your memory of your CV. Remember what you wrote on your CV. Check the dates of places you've worked, technologies that you used. Also research the company just before the call as well. Refresh your memory. Make sure you know what they do. Do they have any open source projects that you're interested in? Do they have any events coming up that you'll be keen to take part in and help out. Uh, so do your research and also research the person who's going to be interviewing you. Go have a look at the LinkedIn profile. Where have they worked before? Where do their interests lie? So you can tailor your answers to match some other interests. If you've got interests that are aligned, they're going to remember you. Remember, it's a two-way street. You're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. So do ask your questions. And asking questions is really good. Don't ask questions about, can I take more holiday if I want? Or do you have free snacks? Ask meaningful questions to show that you're really interested in working in a team and providing value to their project and their company. So ask the questions that are important to you but also ask questions that show that you're also really interested in growing in their company and seeing what improvements you can make. Have these questions prepared beforehand. I would usually recommend having three to five questions, no less and no more. It just shows that you've thought about it and hopefully the interviewer has left time at the end for it. That's why it's also important to try and fit your questions in as you go along. Therefore, it feels more like a discussion rather than them asking you the questions first and then your turn to ask the questions. You want that dialogue. You want them to realize that you're going to fit in with their team. Let me know how your preparation and your interviews go. We do have a Discord channel and a GitHub organization where you can share screenshots or clips or animated gifs of how your preparation and interviews have gone. It will be really great to hear and maybe we can give you some tips and advice back. It'd be great for you to share the result of your setup. Everyone really enjoys the before and afters. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below. My channel is all about open source and so you can get the job, money and clients that you deserve. Open source will really help you accelerate your career because you will not only improve your technical skills, but you're going to improve your communication and collaboration skills. And to be honest, open source is more about collaboration first and code second. Think about it. You raise an issue first, you have a discussion about the work you're going to do, then you'd make your changes, then you raise a pull request and have a discussion after the changes have been made. So you're having discussions before and after, and then discussions will still continue about future ideas and continuous integration improvements. There's so many things that need to be discussed and collaborated on. And plus, when you're doing the bit in the middle where you're coding, you're probably gonna be pairing with people. And that's where you need to communicate and collaborate. So that is a big part of what we do, no matter where you are in your journey. If you're one month in or 20 years in, you've got to be able to communicate and collaborate. If that sounds fun, the link's below to our Discord. Come and chat to the community between live streams and videos. And we look forward to learning from you and learning with you. I'll see you in Discord.